Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the site for Amazon Simple Email Service or Amazon SES. And the site is Amazon's cloud-based service for email marketing services. Now in this course, we'll be looking beyond the marketing language to look at the basic uses for Amazon SES. We'll also take a look at the basic provisions that Amazon is making for GDPR. We'll walk through some basic authentication practices and we'll go beyond the basics for Amazon SES and email deliverability. We'll discuss what it means to use an interface in order to interact with Amazon SES, but to use another service to deliver the email. And then we'll survey the basic interfaces that you have access to. So basically, the course is designed to give you a basic overview as well as to get you started using Amazon SES for business purposes. So with that, thanks, and I'll see you in the first video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to be discussing the pricing for Amazon SES. And assuming that you don't have an account, we're going to go to the pricing link right here at the top. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to notice that you can start using SES at a free tier at no cost. What this will allow you to do is if you are a new Amazon AWS customer, you'll be able to send the first 62,000 messages through Amazon SES absolutely free in addition to having 1,000 inbound messages per month. Now, after the first 62,000, you'll pay 10 cents per 1,000 emails sent afterward. Now this only applies if you're going to be using the application from inside of Amazon SES. If you choose to use another client or another application that uses Amazon SES, then the price you'll pay is 10 cents per 1,000 emails sent. Now there is also pricing for receiving email, however, we're not going to cover that portion in this particular course. Now if you want to get an idea of what you'll be paying every month, you can always use the AWS Simple Monthly Calculator and all you'll need to do is to put in the information based on what you have with Amazon SES. So will give you an estimate of what you'll be paying at the end of your month. Now for some users, it'll be necessary to get a dedicated IP address as this helps with deliverability. A dedicated IP address is going to be $24.95 per month and that'll be in addition to the services that you are using. It's likely that if you choose to use Amazon as your email provider that you will not be using attachments. However, if you do, there is a separate charge for attachments and that charge is going to be over the course of the month, 12 cent per gigabyte of attachments that you sent. Now, if you don't have an AWS account or an Amazon SES account, as you're already logged into your Amazon account, what you'll need to do is to click this button that says create a free account. When you get to this page, you'll either sign up for an existing AWS account that you already have, maybe perhaps you're already using Amazon S3, or you can sign up for a new account using this interface. You'll want to fill in the information that you are being brought to. And once you've done that, you'll then click create account and continue. Now, when you get ready to sign up, you will need to submit a credit card number to AWS. And you can do that here in this screen. And once you've done that, you can then click submit. You'll then have access to the console. What you'll do is you'll scroll down on the right side and you'll click simple email service. So with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we want to talk about the common uses for Amazon SES. And one of the primary uses is going to be to send transactional email from within an application. So for example, if you use WordPress or you use a membership script of some kind and you need an email system that will send transactional email, you can use Amazon SES for this case. Similar to transactional email are notification emails. Again, when you're using an application and your application sends out notifications by email. And of course, one of the primary uses is going to be to send marketing communications, including newsletters, as well as drip campaigns. 
When it comes to transactional email as well as notifications, this is where Amazon SES's benefits really come to play. For example, their ability to get email into the inbox as well as being reliable in terms of uptime means then that when you have new clients or new customers that come on to your application, they'll be getting the emails that you'll be sending to them, giving them things like logins and passwords and direct notifications. And because when you have a particular launch or you have a high volume of customers, this is where the cost effective nature of Amazon benefits you. This means that you can send a lot of emails at a low cost. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at a critical suspension notice from Amazon SES. And one of the things that you'll want to take note of is where they define what is acceptable and what is not. We are going to look at this link, which is this acceptable use policy. Now, you are going to want to take note of something in particular, even before we view that policy. Anything that's considered to be illegal, harmful, or offensive. And again, that's going to be determined from Amazon. Anything that they view that is going to be harmful to their operations or reputation. Again, determined by Amazon. And then anything determined to be disseminating fraudulent goods, schemes, promotions, make money fast schemes, Ponzi or pyramid schemes, fishing or farming. Now all of these things are going to be determined from Amazon's perspective. Now if you do get a notice like this, you can appeal and you can appeal according to the acceptable use policy, determining how you're going to change your content to comply with the acceptable use policy. Again, most of the acceptable use policy will repeat what we have just gone over, but it's stated explicitly here. You want to be careful that your email does not appear to be or look like mass email or spam. Now in its tips and practices, although it does not prohibit these particular industries, they do associate these with poor quality email experience home mortgage, credit, pharmaceuticals, alcohol and tobacco, adult entertainment, casinos, and work from home programs. One of the things the company is monitoring is hard bounces from your email sending. So to remain within the acceptable use guidelines, you'll want to make sure that you are well within these tips and best practices in case there's a problem with one of your emails. And in this course, we will be going over authentication to help you to make sure that you are meeting this requirement. And finally, although it is not required, it's recommend that you use a double opt-in strategy by Amazon. And the reason is because you don't want to have a lot of email addresses that are going to be false when your email starts to send. Again, this is going to be triggering hard bounces, and then that will then determine how close you get to being suspended by Amazon. So before you begin relying on Amazon SES as your autoresponder or as your newsletter sender, you do want to make sure that you are well familiar with the AWS acceptable use policy. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to briefly discuss the general data protection regulation for the operations you may have via email with citizens from the EU. Now, Amazon has an extensive frequently asked questions section that's worth reading even if you choose not to use AWS. However, to go over the entire section would be beyond the scope of this course. There are a few things that are going to be pertinent as you begin to set up your AWS. First, that as a cloud provider, Amazon is choosing to abide by a certain code of conduct with the CISPE. The built-in security features of Amazon SES using the IM system only allows authorized administrators access to the data that you will be keeping with the email addresses in the SES system. In addition to that, data is encrypted with Amazon SES as well as monitored and logged. And as of the recording of this video, Amazon services are compliant with GDPR. For all of its cloud-based systems, Amazon has a system in place for you to be able to delete content from the system. And finally, by having complied with the CISPE, 
and using Amazon SES, you will have the information available to prove that the system you're using is in compliance. And once again, Amazon's section on GDPR is extensive and worth a read. And you can find it in the address on your screen. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. We will now start the setup and verification process. And to get started, we are going to first click verify a new email address. And if you are in sandbox mode, when you start with AWS, you're going to need to verify the to address also. But we are going to start by verifying our from email address. We're going to do that by clicking verify a new email address. And when we get to this dialog box, we're going to put in the email address that we want to verify. And then we're going to click verify this email address. SES will then send the verification email to our email box. So we'll need to go to the email address and then verify the link. You should then see an email address from Amazon Web Services. You're going to want to open that email. You'll then want to verify this link. You should then get a congratulations message saying that your email address is now verified. Once you've verified, you'll note that Amazon will tell you that if you have not applied for a sending limit increase, then you're still in the sandbox environment and you can only send to email addresses that have been verified. So now what we'll need to do, if you're in sandbox mode, is to go through the same process verify another email address so that you'll be able to send to test that email address. In order to test, we'll now go back to the Amazon SES console. What we're going to do now is we're going to click this link that says email addresses. We're then going to choose our from email address. So we're going to highlight it and we're going to click send a test email. Now again, if your account is still in sandbox mode, you'll need to send to a verified email address. So you'll need to have another email address that's already been verified that you can send to to test the system. If you're not in sandbox mode, you can write in the email address you're going to be sending to. You can write in your subject and then your body. And once you've written the email, you can then click send test email. You should then be able to go to your inbox and then see the email that has been sent. And if you do, that means that the system is working properly. Now, in order to begin using Amazon SES, you are going to need to move out of the sandbox mode. And if you are still in, you are going to need to go through a few steps. First, you're going to need to visit this particular link. And this is where you're going to open up a request to move out of the SES sandbox. You're going to choose your region for sending, and then you're going to determine your sending quota or your send rate. You can actually request to be out of the sandbox and request a sending increase at the same time. So you can do that right here. The most important part of this process is that you are going to tell Amazon how you intend to use the SES system. You're going to want to tell them how you're going to build and acquire your mailing list. You're going to tell them how you're going to handle any bounces or complaints. You're going to tell them how people are going to be able to unsubscribe from your mailing list and how you're going to respond to those requests. And then you're going to tell them how you arrived at the number in terms of a sending increase that you requested. And once you submit, this request is going to take one entire business day to evaluate. Now, Amazon also says this, quote, if you want to have your account removed from the sandbox but you don't want a sending limit increase, specify either a daily sending quota of 200 or a maximum send rate of one, depending on the value you choose for limit. These are the limits that Amazon SES applies by default to all accounts in the sandbox. So this will get you out of the sandbox without raising your sending limit so that you can continue to test the system. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to verify our domain that we're going to be using with Amazon SES. 
And to do that, we're going to go to the Identity Management tab inside of SES. So to start from the beginning, we'll start from the home page of Amazon SES. You're going to see a left side menu. You'll then click Domains. What you'll do then is you're going to click Verify a New Domain. You're then going to write in the domain that you're going to be using. You're then going to want to click the Generate DKIM Settings. Then you'll want to click Verify this domain. You'll again get a set of information that you're going to be using with your host. And when you do this, it's going to take about 48 hours in order for you to verify the domain fully and for it to propagate. Now, in some cases, you will then take this information and give it to your host. In other cases, you'll need to place this information inside of your DNS settings yourself. The best place to start would be to ask your host how you should handle this and if they choose to handle it for you, you can let them and if not, then you'll want to enter it. Now if you're already familiar with the zone editor inside of your cPanel or control panel for your website, you'll be able to place these records by using this panel and you'll see that there is a space for the CNAME record, for an MX record, as well as a record for TXT. And once this process is complete, you'll be able to send through Amazon SES with any address from the domain that is verified. You'll also be protected against spoofers who attempt to use your domain and sending capability inside of Amazon SES by faking your email address. Now you can start checking for verification. Now you can start checking for verification as little as one hour after the time when you have set this up. Now, Amazon and most hosts will say that this process is going to take 48 to 72 hours. As of the recording of this video, this process took two hours. Now, you can then go into your domain. If you click the drop down menu, you'll see that the DKIM settings are all verified as well as your mail from domain is now in place and your domain is now ready to be used. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in looking at the email that you received from Amazon SES, what you'll notice is that this email address, which is the from email address, actually is the one that you set up, plus you see the word via, and then it says amazonses.com. Now this is an email address that indicates that you are sending through Amazon SES. You can control this appearance so that this is something custom that will look like it came from your domain. You do that through the sender policy framework and there are two steps to the process. We're going to go over one of those steps in this video. When you come back to your home screen, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your email addresses that you set up. And you're going to go to the email address that you are setting up and that you're working with. You'll then reach to the very top bar here and then click View Details. And when you click View Details, what you're going to do is go to the bottom level and then click this drop down arrow. And you're going to click Set Mail from Domain. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up a subdomain that you're going to be using. In this case, we're going to name our subdomain and then we're going to click Set Mail from Domain. And once again, you will then need to publish this to your DNS settings and you'll either need to use the cPanel Zone Editor or if you work with your host to do this, you'll want to give this information to your host so that they can add it to your DNS. Now, once we've added this information to our DNS, it's going to be another 48 to 72 hours before we can use it and expect to see it render properly inside of our email. So for now, we're just going to close up this dialog box and wait for the propagation. And what we'll see in Amazon SES is that this is going to say pending verification until our system is correct. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, although we already have our DKIM set up through our domain verification process, we're going to go to our email address 
and we're going to set up our notifications and this is the second part of the process and we're going to go into our email addresses we are then going to go back to the email address and we're going to click view details when we get to these details we're going to then click the notifications link and we're going to click the down arrow and then we're going to click edit configuration now by default we have email feedback forwarding on that means then we're going to get bounce and complete notifications sent to us by the email address that we have on file what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have our bounces complaints and delivery set up by topic so we're going to click click here to create a new Amazon SNS topic once we do that we're going to click create topic and then we're going to select the topic for our bounces and we will select the one that we want and then we'll do the same process for complaints and deliveries once we have our topics we will then save this configuration then we will get notifications for bounces complaints and deliveries sent to our email again with specific topics in the email and with that we now have a basic setup for us to begin connecting our account to front-end systems for transactional email as well as notifications okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back now whether or not you're using Amazon SES along with a server or cloud-based interface or you're using it as transactional email you're going to want to make sure that you keep your domains matched so if you're working with a particular domain you're just going to come into Amazon SES and take that existing domain come to the domain section and just as you did before you're going to verify your new domain you're, all you're going to need to do is to click verify a new domain and then you're going to go through the same process that we did before with the previous domain you'll set up your DKIM settings you'll write in your name you'll generate the DKIM settings you'll click verify this domain you will then get another set of entries that you'll need to put into your zone editor you're going to want to make sure to download this entire CSV because this is a drop down menu you may miss this third one here and once you download this CSV you're going to want to come over to your column you'll just want to expand it so that you have all this information then you're going to go to your zone editor for the new domain once you're back inside your zone editor then you'll be able to add your records according to the particular ones that you have in the CSV for example you'll see the three C name records that you'll be entering in and you'll do this for each one of the records that you have in the CSV and you'll just add in the record here inside of your zone editor now the only way that you're going to need to do this is if this is something that your host doesn't do so you are going to want to make sure you check with your host make sure you know the exact procedure to add this to your DNS in some cases your host will actually do this activity for you and once you've entered you'll see that you'll need to go through the verification process once the verification process is complete and you've added the information Amazon will actually keep checking you don't have to go back and manually submit anything this will update automatically as you can see this domain has already verified and we're now ready to use it with the DKIM settings okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back now it's possible that you may want to create transactional email with your Amazon SES account on a different domain after the fact and if that's the case you can come in and you can place a different email address inside of your Amazon SES account you can do that by going through some of the same processes that we did when we first set up an email address by going to this email section and then what we're going to do is we're going to click verify a new email address and then we're going to go back through the same process we're going to write in the email address we're then going to verify our email when we come back and we refresh our page then our email is going to be verified now it's quite possible that the domain that we're going to be using has not been verified what we're going to do if that's the case is we're going to then view details we're then going to go in and we're going to set up our notifications we're going to set up our DKIM 
and our mail from domain and then this will give us the ability to use this email address without having to have our entire domain verified. So for example, we'll step back through the process of creating notifications. We will then set up a process of setting up our DKIM for this specific email address. We will then do the mail from domain policy by going mail from domain. Again, all of these are procedures that we have done before in the authentication process, except now we'll be doing this for an individual email address as opposed to an entire domain so that we can use this email address with a new system attached to our SES account. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When you've gone through the extra step of setting up your email, verifying it, and then making sure that your DKIM settings are verified and that your mail from domain matches your SPF settings, you'll then be in a position to take steps toward increasing your deliverability. And one of the things that you can do is you can make sure that any links that you create inside of your email whether you're doing a promotion or whether you're doing some kind of notification that you use the domain in the email that you're actually using or the domain that has been verified. This will lend itself to the authority of your email and along with your content can help your email achieve deliverability. Now you can increase the reputation of the domain executing links and using the domain in your emails by using a dedicated IP. Now, using a dedicated IP is not a necessity with Amazon SES, but it can increase the likelihood that your emails will get delivered. In order to do this, you will come to your left side panel. You will then need to open up a limits increase case. You do, when you're submitting your application, what you're going to want to do is write in here in the use case description that you're requesting a dedicated IP and you'll let them know which domain you're requesting one for. Once you've done that and you're matching this with the links that you're using, you're increasing your opportunities to be inboxed by most cloud-based email services. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, part of the process in working with Amazon SVS is going to be making sure that your content is such that your emails will be deliverable. You'll be avoiding hard bounces. So you want to make sure that everything that you're writing, everything that you're putting in your email is going to be well within the acceptable use policy. And basically what Amazon is really looking for is that you're not trying to deceive anyone, that you're not trying to do a bait and switch, is that your email is delivering exactly what it says it's going to. Anything that you're doing with the email that's going to be transactional or notification, it should be specific. So it really should comply to whatever it is that they bought or wherever it is that they have opted into. Those emails should be specifically for that. Doesn't mean that you can't use a link to sell in those emails. However, it really should be the bulk of the content about what it is that they've opted into. You want to note that Amazon system is going to scan your email before it goes out. So it's going to be looking to find anything that really looks for common spam patterns in your content. So you want to take note of that. This is what happens when some users find that Amazon may suspend their account because after scans, their emails do not meet the acceptable use policy. What you want to do, and this is the point of this video, is you will need to set up some email addresses and you want to set these email addresses so that you'll be able to test to find out whether or not the emails you're sending out are going to be going into spam boxes whether or not they're going to be going into promotional tabs whether or not they're going to be hitting the inbox and so you want to set up these email addresses with the most popular cloud-based services so that you can check them easily email addresses from gmail from aol from yahoo from Microsoft and any other service that you know is popular, you're going to be able to send out the email so that you'll be able to check these boxes on a regular basis. If you can, every email that you send out, you want to make sure that those emails are going into the inboxes of these popular services. You want to note what happens when the email is sent to these boxes. You want to note what kind of category it's being placed in. And you want to note how consistently you're making the inbox. You want to try, of course, not to use any common spam words in your content. 
And then if you can, you want to avoid using the same link in your email multiple times. Length can be a factor, but it's not always going to be a factor. So it doesn't matter if you leave your emails and you make them really long. It doesn't necessarily mean that your email is not going to be considered to be spam. Make sure that you're testing any brand name and any popular titles before you send out. And so anything that you've seen in the news that people are talking about, that people are building business opportunities around, make sure you test those brand names in your email before you send them out. And of course, the other thing you want to do is use testing sites, and we'll be talking about that in a separate video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, once you have secured some kind of interface you're going to be using to send out your Amazon SES email, you can use the site mail-tester.com. And mail-tester.com will send your email into a test box where you can look to find out whether or not your email is considered to be spam. Now, the most important function that mail-tester.com really does is the SPF and DKIM check. And you'll want to focus on whether or not you've got an SPF or DKIM check problem. So you'll want to test your domain. You want to test your DKIM selector. You want to make sure that this is working correctly inside of the domain that you're using, especially that you're going to be sending out with your email. And what you're looking for when you check your score mainly is going to be your DKIM and SPF check. And when you do, you're going to want to see that your DKIM is valid. You're going to want to see that your SPF is valid. And again, Mail Tester will help you to figure out whether or not you have a problem and if you are fully authenticated. Now, another testing system you can use is gmas.co forward slash inbox. And you'll be able to use these email addresses in your campaign. And this will tell you whether or not your emails are likely to go to spam. And this is a great testing facility that you can use right alongside of mail-tester.com to determine if your content is going to put you in the spam folder. Now, obviously, you're going to be using these with your email interface. So when you've chosen a way to send out email, you're going to put this email address as well as the GMAS emails into your campaign so that you can determine prior to a live campaign what's actually going to happen with your email and before you send out emails through Amazon SES so that you won't trigger a number of hard bounces. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You will be faced with the question of whether or not you should or whether or not you must use double or single opt-in when it comes to Amazon SES. Now, there are two ways, obviously, to use Amazon SES, transaction or notification emails or marketing communications. And when you're using SES for marketing communications, you will want to determine whether or not you're going to use double or single opt-in. And there is no specific requirement that the interface you're using with Amazon SES uses double opt-in. So you can do single opt-in when you're using Amazon SES. Additionally, Amazon does not prioritize double or single opt-in email addresses when sending out your emails as do some email service providers. Now, it does measure what appears to be a lack of interest through the form of hard bounces. It's their stated policy and tips that they suggest that you only allow interested subscribers to stay. And that would indicate that you are using double opt-in because they've gone through the second level of trying to get into your email marketing list. Now, if you choose not to use double opt-in, you will want to keep your list segmented so the individuals get specific messaging to the reason that they actually opted in. Of course, now with all of this, the point of email marketing is not to avoid hard bounces. You do, though, want to keep from investing time and resources into a system like Amazon SES and lose it due to a few simple things that you can put in place. So if you choose, again, not to use double opt-in, make sure then that you're keeping your messaging specific and segmented. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in order to use Amazon SES for your marketing communications, you will be using an interface. If you're going to be using it for transaction and notifications, you will be using the SMTP settings and you'll be using it for transaction and notification emails. To do that, you are going to need to come into your 
dashboard and then you're going to need to configure your SMTP settings and you'll see that in this left side menu and you're going to click this link and you're going to click this button that says create my SMTP credentials. What you're going to do now is you're going to create an IM user for your SMTP authentication. You're going to write in a new user name. But once you do that and then you create your user, you're going to want to then download the credentials. Once you download these credentials, you'll want to keep these in a safe place and you want to limit the number of people who are going to see them. This is going to be your connection to Amazon SES using SMTP. When you do that, you're going to get the username, you're going to get the SMTP user, and you're going to get an SMTP password. This is what you're going to need in order to connect with the application so that it will take these SMTP credentials and use them so that SES is sending the email. Once you have downloaded your credentials, you can then close out this interface. And you'll need to note that these credentials will only be created once and this is the only time you'll be able to access them. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Although there are a number of email service systems that you can use to connect with Amazon SES, we're now going to survey nine different services that you can use either on your server or a cloud-based system in order to connect with Amazon SES to take advantage of the pricing as well as deliverability. And the first of those systems is Cindy.co. And Cindy.co is a system that will cost $59 one time. It allows you to send unlimited newsletters as well as to segment your list into different products and brands. Now this is a self-hosted service that will run on your server. So it will take some measure of technical aptitude in order to get it up and running. Now Email Octopus is another email service and it connects through both WordPress and Zapier along with Amazon SES. So while it still runs on your server, the pricing does compare favorably with most email marketing systems. As you can see, 10,000 subscribers is $19 a month. 2,500 subscribers is going to be zero with your statistics being stored for 90 days. In this case, there's a difference between automation campaigns and just plain campaigns. With the free version, all you'll have access to are going to be campaigns. Now, an enterprise level system is going to be Peepo Campaigns. And Peepo Campaigns has an email template library and it has an API along with the marketing communications that will allow you to use it. The pricing is obviously a little different. Of course, you can send 10,000 free emails every month, and then you're going to pay at the free level $0 a month. You can actually move up to $9 a month and then pay 10 cents for every 1,000 emails that are going to be sent. They give you an opportunity to compare the pricing with other systems that you are considering. So these three email systems allow you to connect with Amazon SES. There is some measure of getting these things set up. So you want to consider the one that's going to be easiest to install and maintain. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video where we will go through three more interfaces. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to go through the second set of three connection points for Amazon SES. And you're looking at moonmail.com. Moonmail.com is an open source email marketing system. Now for context, it is used by international brands such as Warner Brothers and Nespresso. The paid pricing starts at $15.99 a month for 25,000 recipients. Now Formget is a cloud-based service and is a little more expensive than the others. However, you do not have to go through a setup and maintenance process. And it does compare favorably to other email marketing systems in that you can send to 100,000 subscribers for $79 a month. And so the cost of the savings that they're getting from Amazon SES, they're passing this on to you, the customer. And finally, there's EasyMail 7. EasyMail 7 is another system and the payment is going to be one time. However, just note that there is an annual maintenance fee if you choose to keep working with Easy Mail after your anniversary. And obviously, it's being used by a number of businesses, large, midsize, and small. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video where we will look at three additional SES connections. 
Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to look at the last of the three connection points that we're going to survey with Amazon SES. And you're looking at Easy Cindy Pro. It says that it's designed for a user base of about 5,000, which would be considered to be a smaller mid-sized business. And the pricing is again considered favorable to autoresponder companies, where you'll see that $59 a month would be for 100,000 subscribers. Now, Easy Cindy Pro is designed to work with a number of SMTP services, including Amazon SES as well as SendGrid and others. Another system is Mautic. Mautic is open source and free to get started. Now there is a pro version that does offer additional features and has a variable pricing method. And finally, there is Agile CRM. Agile CRM is another cloud-based company that works with other larger and web-based businesses. As you can see, it has varying pricing depending on how large you're going to need, depending mainly on what kind of integrations you're going to need with your email system. And as you can see, 50,000 contacts will be as low as $29 a month. So you can use Amazon SES either with a server-based system where you are going to maintain the software or with a cloud-based system where you're going to allow someone else to maintain the system and then connect to your Amazon SES as your marketing communication system. Obviously, there are cost considerations, so you'll need to make sure if you choose the route of lesser cost that it's not offset by needing to maintain your server. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, you've now seen various connection points for Amazon SES if you want to use it as an email marketing communication system. And undoubtedly, you now have to make a decision about which one is going to fit your business best. But the first thing you'll want to do is to make sure you've walked through the entire process of authenticating your email as well as your domain so that you'll be ready both to use Amazon SES as your transactional email system as well as your email marketing communication system. Now if you want to see an example of setting up your SMTP system with an interface, there is one along with this course. You can see the example of a connection between ClickFunnels, which is a cloud-based marketing system, and Amazon SES through the SMTP. Regardless, you can then begin monitoring your email through the various systems that Amazon SES gives you in your console panel. So with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.